podcast we're going to look at the energy pyramid model for ecosystems. So far with food webs you have studied how energy moves through food web, so what direction it moves through and used arrows to show that. The energy pyramid model however takes that a step further and describes how much energy moves through each step of a food web. So we're going to get into that in a little bit of detail in this vodcast. Before we do, please write down the title of the vodcast, Energy Pyramid Model, and then the definition below. Describes the amount of energy passed on through a food web at each level. Okay, so this is what the model essentially looks like. So what I'd like you to draw first is this pyramid. Again, I said this is the Energy Pyramid Model. So we've got the pyramid here. Okay, so draw that first. And then, sorry about that. What I want you to add to that pyramid is four different levels. There's level one, two, three, and then four at the top. Make sure you leave plenty of room between these levels because we are going to add in some information um, as we go forward here. So that is our energy pyramid. That's the model in and of itself. And now what do each of those levels represent? Let's get on to that next. So down here at the base of the pyramid, and here at the bottom, we've got our producers. So we've talked about what producers are already, right? So those are examples of our producers, our plants. Get my pen here. Plants, algae, trees. Okay, we've gone over this many times now, so you guys should be familiar with that. Now, the reason that they are at the bottom of the pyramid is you'll notice that this section of the pyramid has the biggest portion, right? This is the widest portion of the pyramid down here where the producers are. Okay, what that means is that that is the place where we have the most energy. Because the producers are the organisms that get the energy from the sun, they have the most energy of all the different organisms in a food chain. So we're going to add to producers most energy. Okay, so, so far you should have written down in your bottom portion of your pyramid here, the producers labeled at the bottom, and that they have the most energy. I think you'll remember what those producers are, the examples of plants and algae and things like that, but if you want to add that in, you could certainly put that in as well. Okay, for the next level, you could probably guess what the next level up is. Those are our primary consumers. And again, let me point out to you that the size of this level is important. Okay, this one is a little bit smaller, a little less wide than the producers down below it. So that means that in this level we have less energy. Than our producers. Okay, so we've lost some energy in the process. So now we can go over to this side and look at these stars on the side. Okay, what this star says is that there's 10% of the energy that gets passed on from the producers to the primary consumers. So of all the energy that these producers originally get from the sun, only 10% of that is passed on to the primary consumers when they're eaten. So to put this in real terms, for example, of the grass that's growing down here as a producer, only 10% gets passed on when the little mouse, here's my mouse, eats the grass. Okay, so the mouse can only get 10% on average of the energy that the producers provide. Again, it's an average, it can vary from ecosystem to ecosystem, but that's an easy one to remember, it's 10%. And that's why our energy goes down. That's why the producers have more energy than the primary consumers. Primary consumers have less energy than the producers. All right, let's look at the next level. You can see over here on the side where the stars are, again, only 10% of the energy from the primary consumers 
is passed on to the next level again. So that level is getting smaller in its amount of energy. That level up there, as I'm sure you can guess again, is our secondary consumers. And again, check out the size. Okay, this rectangle is m smaller than the one below it, than the primary consumers, and considerably smaller than the producers down at the bottom. Okay, because again, only 10% of the primary consumer's energy was passed on. So if we go back to that mouse, okay, it only got 10% of energy from the grass, but if something like a snake were to eat that mouse, that snake is only going to get 10% of the energy of that mouse. So with each step upward, we're getting less and less energy. All right, some food webs are done there. As you know, we end up with secondary consumers, and that's all. But if we would have another level, okay, that would be considered our tertiary consumers. And they, of course, are the smallest of all as far as energy goes. Okay, this little pointy section of the food or the energy pyramid is the smallest of all of them. Again, the same reason. Only 10% of the energy from the secondary consumers is passed on to our tertiary consumers. So we had our snake down here. It had only 10% of the mouse's energy. If that gets eaten by a hawk, only, once again, 10% of that snake's energy is passed on. Okay. So really, the overall idea of this energy pyramid is only 10% of energy is passed on at each level. Okay, only 10% of energy is passed on at each level. So as we increase our steps in the um, energy pyramid, we decrease the amount of energy that's available. All right, just a couple more things I'd like you to add into this that are important. Okay, first of all, there's a name for each of these steps. So each one of these pieces of our energy pyramid here is called a trophic level. Okay, those are called the trophic levels. That kind of word trophic should sound a little bit familiar because we talked about that when we talked about heterotrophs and autotrophs. So let's just add on heterotrophs and autotrophs to our pyramid as well so that we remember how those fit into the scheme of things here. So down here our producers are the autotrophs. And then all of these consumers are considered the heterotrophs. And remember, each level is considered a trophic level. Okay, it's a different level of something eating something else. So at each trophic level, we only pass on 10% of the energy. Okay, so I think that's a good start for that one. Now let's go on to some problems that, uses these, that use these principles to look at energy transfer. I'm going to give you these sample problems and work through them with you. You will get a chance to do these in class as well, but I want to kind of give you a heads up so you can see how this works in advance. So sample problem one says, if 1,000 calories of energy are available in a dandelion, so I'm going to do our little dandelion here. Here's the dandelion, and it only has a thousand calories of energy. How much energy is transferred to a cow that ate it? Okay, this is going to be a little more challenging here. Make a semblance of a cow. There he is. Okay, and then how much energy from that is transferred to the person who ate the cow? So in other words, ate a hamburger. So then we're going to draw a little stick person here. That's easy enough. Okay, so if we start with 1,000 calories at the producer level, 
according to our energy pyramid, only 10% of the energy is going to get passed on to the primary consumer, which is our cow. Okay, so we need to figure out what is 10% of 1,000. So that means we take 1,000 times 0 0.10, that's 10%, which equals 100 calories. Okay, that's our energy. It's measured in calories, so that cow, out of the original energy the dandelion has, only gets 100 calories of energy. Why? Well, that dandelion used that energy for other things, which we'll talk about more in your energy pyramid um, task questions that you have with your uh, simulation you did in class. So if we've got 100 calories now from the original dandelion in the cow, that doesn't mean that the cow only has 100 calories in it, but it means of the one dandelion it ate, only 100 calories were passed on to the cow. The next question is how much of that is transferred to the person who ate the hamburger, so the secondary consumer. So here's another step in a trophic level, which means, again, only 10% is passed on. So 100 times 0 0.10, which some of you can do in your head, I'm sure. Get my decimal point in there. Equals 10 calories. So from that original 1,000 calories that was in that single dandelion, the human ended up with 10 calories at the end, based on, again, that model of the energy pyramid. Okay, moving on. One more sample problem. If there are 175 apples or cal calories in an apple, let's do the apple here. Here's my apple and it has 175 calories. I want to know how much energy is used by the time you eat it. Okay, so you're eating the energy from the apple. We know only 10% of the energy is passed on, so what this means by how much is used is how much do you not get, how much is not passed on. So to figure that out, we first want to figure out again what's 10% of 175 because that tells us how many much we actually get. So 175 times 0 0.10 equals 17.5 calories. Okay, so you get 17.5 calories from that apple. How much has been used? In other words, how much did you not get? Then we have to do a little subtraction. 175 minus 17.5 at our decimal points. We'll subtract this out. Again, I'm sure some of you can do this in your head, but I just like to show the work so you can see where this is all coming from. Okay, this is the amount of calories that answers our questions right here. This is the amount of calorie that the apple actually used that did not get passed on. Again, how did I determine that? 10% does get passed on, and that 10% is 17.5. So how much is left from the original 175 that did not get passed on? Well, we need to subtract it out. The result is 157.5 calories when you subtract 175 minus that 10%. You could also figure this out the other way by taking 175 times 0.9% or 90%, sorry, which is 0.9. Okay, that would also tell you how much was used, right? Because if 10% was passed on, then 90% was used and that would give you this same answer. Okay, as I said, we'll go over more of these problems in class, but this gives you a little introduction anyway.